car I'm driving right now, a 2019 Mustang Bullet. This is a car no one has even driven and been fortunate enough to have been given the privilege. This is Mark Schaller. He's the marketing uh, director for Mustang or Performance, is that correct? Yeah, for Mustang. Well, this is an iconic car. It's based on the legendary Steve McQueen film from 1968. Is that possible? It is absolutely yeah, I possible. I saw it when it came out in the theater. I think it was <laughs> 18 years old. And because of the film's popularity, Ford is now releasing their third special edition Mustang Bullet. And of course, it's Highland Green. And I have to admit, it makes me smile, you know? When you get behind the wheel of this, you feel like Steve McQueen. I mean, it's uh, it's really fascinating. And that's really what you're looking for, right? When you get behind the wheel of a bullet, you want to feel like you're part of the movie, right? Right. You can imagine yourself, you know, driving around the streets of San Francisco. Morning's very nicely. Marketing manager getting very nervous, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you're like, let him do what? Well, how about the original Bullet Mustang? Has anybody seen that? And that's one of those cars that seems to have just disappeared. Yes. Yeah. So we knew it was uh, owned by a private individual. Mm -hmm. um, and then it sort of just fell off the map. And nobody has seen it for about 40 years. Uh-oh. I see something coming up in my rear view mirror. There's something behind you? There is something. Ladies and gentlemen, behold. The long lost but never forgotten original Mustang that Steve McQueen actually drove in Bullet. See, it just makes you smile when you see the real car. <laughs> well, how cool is this? Hey, Mark, thanks for setting this up. Of course. Oh, man. How you doing? I'm Jay. Hey, Jay. Sean. Hi, Sean. Can I get in? Yes, sir. This is the actual car! To say this is a big deal would be a bit of an understatement. Give you some context. Two identical 1968 Highland Green Mustang Fastbacks were used during filming. One was basically destroyed during production. The other Mustang, well, that just up and disappeared. There had been rumors about it being found in someone's barn. Somebody else said it was in Mexico. But after 50 years of being out of sight, here is the untouched, unrestored, just as McQueen left it, original 1968 Bullet Movie Mustang. And this was your dad's, huh? Yes, sir. Hey, Sean. <laughs> no? I think he's a little smaller than me. Steve McQueen was all guts and no glory. I'm all gut and, uh, well, a little glory. You know, this is a real thrill. Because, you know, I saw the movie. I thought it was the greatest movie at the time, but I never thought I'd actually drive the car. <laughs> so tell me how your dad acquired this car. Was he looking for a movie car? Did he love bullets? Did he track it down? How, how did it happen? So in 1974, dad was flipping through road and track, and in the back of it, it's said 1968 Mustang bullet car, but it was misspelled as it said bullet. It was B-U-L-L-E-T-T. -T. Dad called the guy and come to find out nowadays that dad actually was the only guy that called. And really? That was it. He showed up, he bought it, and he took off. So in 77, uh, McQueen got my dad's info from the second owner. Well, he wanted the car back, McQueen? Yeah, McQueen wanted the car back. He had called my dad, and then he sent the letter, uh, a real nice letter. By that time, my dad had already put 45,000 miles on the car. Right. So when did you decide this is going to be a family secret that nobody could tell. The car was always a problem. My dad, mom and dad always said as far as registering it, because it has no reverse lights. The exhaust is extremely loud. Certain things front to back about the car that just New Jersey didn't like. Right. They didn't right. want it on the road. You know, that's kind of what parked it. And I think it just kind of accidentally became a secret. Did your dad lose interest in it, in it over the years? No, not at all. Um, we always knew that we wanted to do something with it. And I think that, you know, he was so busy. And then uh, he retired, and then he uh, he developed Parkinson's. Um, oh, I'm sorry. You know, life just continued to kind of happen. We always wanted to, uh, to build the car and show it to the world. Sadly, Bob Cannon passed away in 2014. But his son, Sean, was determined to get the car up and running 
And with word of the new bullet's release, he decided it was time to share the family's secret and allowed me to be the first one to drive it. I want people to experience this car, the story, from the beginning to the end, just like I have. And it's a great homage to your dad. I mean, you know, I'm sure you think of him every time you get behind the wheel. Every time. Well, John, you know what I'd love to do? I would love to dedicate this segment to your dad and thank him for saving this great piece of automotive history, a piece of my childhood, a piece of, God, every car guy's childhood. This is the car that really just did it for everybody. Yes, thank sir. you, my friend. Thank you so You're much. You're a great custodian. Yes, sir. And for a wonderful piece of history. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs>